If you want to enter the gig economy, particularly as a performer, you're going to want to listen to this entire episode. It's important and particularly listen through to the end because I'm recording this and realize that I forgot a hugely important thing. So listen through to the end. I add something right before I say goodbye that is crucial for being successful in the gig economy if you're going to be working with agents or clients directly. Hello and welcome to the Innovative Mindset Podcast. I'm your host, Isolde Trachtenberg. On the show, I interview peak performing innovators in the creative, social impact, and earth conservation spaces who are working to change the world. This episode is brought to you by Brain FM. Brain FM combines the best of music and neuroscience to help you relax, focus, meditate, and even sleep. I love it and have been using it to write, create, and do some of my deepest work. Because you're a listener of the show, you can get a free trial. Head over to brain.fm slash innovative mindset to check it out. If you decide to subscribe, you can get 20% off with the coupon code innovative mindset, all one word. And now let's get to the show. Hello, and welcome to the innovative mindset podcast. I'm your host is Olda Trachtenberg. Thank you so much for being here. This is super cool. I'm having a really amazing time working through all of the different facets about what it takes to be successful as a performer in the gig economy working with agents. Why? Because, you know, everybody's talking about the great resignation. People are leaving in droves jobs that they thought they needed or wanted, and they're striking out for greener pastures for brighter days. And a lot of people are going, you know what? I want to work in the gig economy. But the question is, how do you do it successfully? right? How do you transition from working a full-time job and maybe a side hustle juggling or being a unicycle rider or a palm reader or a singing telegram person or a dancer or whatever it is that you do? How do you take that and transition it into doing something like that full-time? So this whole process over the last few weeks that I've been going through, I've been talking a lot about the different facets of what you need to do. We've talked about how to develop a kick-ass demo. We've talked about how to reach out to agents initially, all sorts of stuff that I've explored and talked to you about. And now I kind of want to talk about, it's not, it's not the sort of the big Leviathan in the room or whatever. It's really important and yet it kind of isn't. So what am I talking about? I am talking about, in many ways, your calling card. It's not just your demo, it's your website. Do you need a website to be a successful performer? In the gig economy, working with talent agents, you actually don't, right? You actually don't specifically need a website that will highlight what you do in a way that really focuses only on you and what you're doing in order to succeed. You could just make a demo, put it up on YouTube if you have a YouTube channel, or share it directly as an MP4 with an agent or agencies, if you will, and go from there. But actually, I really like the notion of having a website. You can have a website for free. You can go to wordpress.com or one of the others and create a website, upload your images, your video, all of that stuff, and ta-da, you have a website. You want to make it look, of course, professional. You don't want to half-ass it. Let's let's call it what it is. You just don't want to do that. Why? Because if your website looks chintzy or like you didn't think it out well enough, then any agent or potential client who goes to it is going to go, mm, is this person worth hiring and is this person worth the fee they're asking for? Another important point to consider, right? Because if you want to charge $20 an hour and go read palms or tarot or, or be a singing telegram person or play Irish music or uh, dance or whatever, then you could probably get work with a half ass website. Sure. But you probably want to do better than that. And if you do, this is what you need to listen to. Then I'm going to talk to you through the key components of the website. First of all, uh, if you go to somewhere like wordpress.com and you and you pay for removing the ads, that's great. If you can't afford to do that, 
don't worry about the ads right now. You will get there. You will get to the point where you can go, ha ha, I don't need to have those ads show at the bottom that say brought to you by wordpress.com. But for now, if you're just getting started, if you're just dipping your toe into this pool, all you need to do is go to wordpress.com, come up with your name. For example, mine might be Isolde T tarot card reader or readings by Isolde dot com or Isolde musician or something like that, right? Something that is your name and perhaps what you do. Or if you already have a reputation, it could just be your name.com or dot co or dot net or whatever. The, all of those rules relaxed many years ago. So if you can find or dot biz, that seems to be another one. So looking for your name or your name plus what you do, if you want it to be a little bit more unique, go to one of the many domain uh, registration websites, register the domain name you want. I sometimes will go get the .com, the .co, and the .biz of it and then have them all point to the same site just because in case someone doesn't know how to go, you can give them just about anything. And if they misspell something or if they forget the M on .com, they'll still get to you. But whatever, that's that's neither here nor there. You know to do that. Get your domain name, the one you want, and then set up a WordPress site. And you can either have the WordPress site be your uh, slash your name and whatever, or you can pay for the domain name mapping is what they call it. And then you will have the domain name actually forwarded to that WordPress.com site for like $13 a year or something like that. I don't even remember, but it's it's not it's not too expensive. Here we go. And, I, and I'm not affiliated with Word. I mean, I use WordPress and I love WordPress, but I'm not affiliated with WordPress. So I, I'm, I'm just telling you what I know how to do. You can do Squarespace, you can do Wix, you can do any number of, however you decide you want to do it. I'm just telling you that a domain name that is you and or you plus what you do looks professional. A WordPress site or a Wix site or a Squarespace site or whatever that looks cool and professional is going to only help you when it comes to sending people to your website to perhaps get booked. So the components of the website once you've started. You want you front, front and center, your headshot needing to be, and I talked about this a little while ago in another episode, your headshot needs to be front and center, it needs to be beautiful, it needs to be well lit, it needs to be showing you either your face, depending on what you're trying to do, or you with your instrument. Like, for example, when I put up my headshot, my main shot from my musician site, it was me holding my violin in one hand and my guitar in the other hand. Why? Because I do both. So that's a way to do it, right? If you are a guitarist, you can put yourself with a guitar. If you're a pianist, you can put yourself, you know, in front of the keyboard, whatever whatever it is, highlight what you do based on, uh, well, no, highlight in the website what you do based on what you do, right? So then you're going to want video. Your demo should be front and center too. Uh, don't make it play automatically. People apparently hate that. I actually don't mind, but whatever, do what you need to do. Make the video, again, the video, and I've talked about this in a previous episode, if you're listening to this in order, you should have heard this already. If if you want, go back <laughs> and start, I think it's uh, January 28th is the first episode. Anyway, so there you are, you've got your video, your video looks amazing, it is well produced, it's well lit, you are uh, sometimes by yourself showing off all the cool stuff you're doing. But as much as possible, your video reflects you in front of audiences and audiences who are enjoying themselves, right? That's, a, <laughs> that's an important part of this. Audiences who are enjoying themselves. And what, whatever, whatever thing you're doing, if you are reading tarot cards or juggling or eating fire or hula hooping, dancing, whatever it is that you're doing, singing, playing guitar, playing at a wedding, getting video of yourself doing that is can be as simple as asking someone to video record you on your phone for a little while or you can bring a little a little tiny tripod and stick it up somewhere sotto voce and record yourself and then use what's best right your video remember is no longer than a minute and it highlights all the really cool stuff you do six to eight seconds at a time so then is your video 
then you can have a little about section. But the about section, of course, has to be more what you'll do for your audience than anything about you, right? So I don't talk about myself and the fact that I'm an immigrant and that I was born in the Soviet Union. I talk about myself to reflect in my tarot card reading website, for example, that I learned how to read cards when I was four years old for my great grandmother in the former Soviet Union, because where I come from, that's part of the culture, reading stones and cards and, and various talismans and things like that. It's just part of the culture. So when I talk about myself in, in the context of a tarot reader, I talk about all of the things that happened to me that made me the tarot reader that I am today. I hope that makes sense because it's an important distinction. I'm not talking about my time as an English major at the University of Michigan. I'm talking about how I supplemented my income by reading cards for friends at parties that whole time. So if you can see how everything is through that lens, how I started working on the college circuit through the years in order to, again, transition to the gig economy full-time, to the gig life full-time. So, so everything I talk about is based on that, right? It's all based on how I interact with audiences. So I got my English degree and communication concentrations, and I parlay that into the pattern that I have and the rapport that I establish with every audience, whether I'm talking about my musical life or my tarot card reading life or palm reading life or speaking in front of my work as a professional speaker in front of audiences, talking to them about how to bring creativity and the juice of life into their own work and lives, right? So I talk about everything through that lens, super important. Then you want to highlight all the things that you do, right? It's not going to be just, uh, I, I sing, for example, if I, if it's my music website, I also play violin and play guitar and what kinds of gigs am I available for? What kinds of audiences am I going to really gel with best? Right? So I say things like, Traditional Irish music, yes, but I don't just go traditional Irish music. I say for St. Patrick's Day celebrations and summer parties and weddings that I'm available for processionals and recessionals if they want a really beautiful haunting violin piece, things like that. I also work memorial services. So I will say all of these things as part of listing the kinds of things I do, the kinds of audiences I perform for. So all of that is in there because I'm not just interested in highlighting what I do, I'm interested in showing a prospective client, a prospective booker, all of the ways in which I will make their lives beautiful and wonderful if they work with me, right? All of the ways that I will make their events shine and sparkle and be magic for their guests if they work with me. That's the point of the website. It's to highlight to potential clients why they want to work with you. The rest, hmm, not so important. But if they come away from that web page going, I want to work with that person, then you've done your website has done its job, right? So be aware that that's so important. The focus you put on the website cannot just be this is me highlighted. It's not that. It's this is me and how I will be able to entertain, enthrall, and delight your guests. That's the most important part what they can expect to come away with, what your client, your booker can expect to come away with should they work with you. They know I'm responsible. They know that audiences will love me. They're going to enjoy interacting with me and I'm going to change their lives, right? And and I do. So that's cool. I'm not, you don't, don't lie, right? Don't, don't lie. Don't expand the truth at all. Be truthful, but focus it on how if this person works with you, they will benefit. It makes all the difference in the world. And then if your social media reflects the work that you're doing, buy gum, add the social media. Absolutely. If the, if it does that, if your social media is all about you going to the beach, then maybe not. But if it's going to reflect, if it's going to be reflective of the work that you want to do in this gig life that you're entering, absolutely include your socials. And then, of course, have several places where if they want to contact you by phone or by email, 
then have those there too. I have contact form seven through WordPress, which I love, 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 because it gives me the opportunity to ask them a couple questions as they connect with me. So I ask for their name, their email, their phone number, what kind of job they might want, and some parameters. Is it a party of 300 people? Is it a party of 20 people? Is it going to be, I've, I've had myself booked to do a pre-wedding tarot card reading for a woman who was going to be getting married the next day. And what her husband to be had gotten her was a spa day at a Shishi Fufu hotel in Washington, D.C. And it was the Willard, if you want to know. And I walked in and part of her gift from him was me giving her a tarot card reading on how their marriage would go, on how their relationship was and on how their marriage would go. And that was the gift that he gave. And because he knew that I work uh, bridal showers and weddings from my promo material on my website, he was like, yes, let's do this. And he wanted to book me to go and, and, and do a reading for her in between her hair and her nail appointment or something like that, or her massage and her nails. So do you see what I mean? How you can lay the seed for the kinds of gigs that you want to do and can do so that when clients see them, they're going, ah, oh, yeah, this is someone I want to work with. The same happens for uh, the Philosopher's Tones, the Carolyn group that I, that I lead and manage. When they realize that you can do just about anything they want, they, they get to work their imagination. They get to be really creative. So we got booked once. This is through an agent. But we got booked once to be part of a wedding proposal. I'm talking about weddings a lot, interestingly, but these are events that this is the kind of, if you're a performer or an entertainer, you often will get booked for weddings and, and other rites of passage, if you will. And so this guy wanted to uh, pr propose to his girlfriend. And what he wanted to do was to have us come and sing some carols. And he was going to lie to her and go, oh yeah, the the neighborhood association uh, the condo association hired these carolers to walk around and isn't that cool here are the carolers and he's like sing a couple of carols so we sang silent night and rudolph the red-nosed reindeer or something like that and then the the couple had a favorite song they had their song which was endless love by diana ross and lionel richie and yes it's a little strange because the movie is very much about obsession so I don't know what that was all about but they love the song and it was their song and so what he wanted to do was have they were going to have Christmas Eve at her family with her family and we were going to show up on Christmas Eve and uh, Carol in looking like Dickensian Victorian carolers and seeing Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and Silent Night and her whole family was going to be there but then they kind of walked upstairs going, oh, I'm going to go back. And as they went upstairs, we broke into an acapella version of Endless Love. And while we sang, he got down on one knee and he proposed. And it was a, be I mean, it was beautiful. I th The fact that we got to be part of that moment still just makes me deliriously happy. What a cool thing to be part of. But if we hadn't highlighted our ability to sing not just carols, but other songs as well, and that we have a wide repertoire and that we are willing and happy, delighted to work with clients to really make their events unique and amazing, they might not have thought of us for that. He might not have thought of us for that gig, right? So, so that's another way that you want to highlight things in your website is make sure that you, if you are willing to work with the client to really develop something that is unique to the client, make sure you highlight that on your website. I'm talking both about my musical life and my tarot card reading life, and I'm going back and forth. Sorry, but this is, this is something that I do that other people don't. For example, on my website, I, well, in real life too, when I go to gigs, I like to create an atmosphere, right? So I, I will ask what the color scheme is of the event, and then I have different colored cool shimmery fabrics that I will bring with me and I will decorate my my space in this very cool uh you know beautiful curtained sort of space with sequins and crystals and all of that in their color scheme other readers don't do that they just show up with their stuff 
generally speaking, some do nowadays, but for a long time, I was really the only person who did that. And so clients know if they're repeat clients that they're going to have a cooler thing. Like for example, if they hire me for a Mardi Gras theme, I'm going to bring your purple, your gold, your green, and do everything up in that, in those Mardi Gras colors. If it's Halloween, then it's going to be spooky spider webs and, and lots of blacks and oranges, but shiny and cool. So it depends on what you're hiring me for. I will bring something to what they call dress the set that's going to be really cool and delightful and unique. And so people have, I can't tell you how many times people have uh, come in and gone, I can't believe you did this. This looks amazing. Because they had provided me with a table and two chairs. And then when they came back, it was this beautiful, looked like a, I don't know, a, a, a gorgeous sort of scene from New Orleans or something. So what I do on my website to show that is I take before and after photos of my space. I show the before photo with two white chairs, two white plastic chairs and a white plastic table. And then I show the after photo after I'm done decorating it. And it is lots of beautiful shimmering purple and turquoise fabrics, for example. So the client can see that they're going to get something special. They're going to get something unique if they book me to do their gig, to do their event. So the more you can set yourself apart as a unique performer in whatever venue you're performing, you could be a dancer, you could be a, a singer, you could be whatever it is, the more you can set yourself apart and the more you can highlight that on your website, the more clients and potential clients will want to work with you because they're going to know that they're going to get a unique experience that no one else does. And a lot of us love that little, ooh, I got something different than anybody else and it's super cool experience. I hope that makes sense and I hope that you uh, get the importance of having that website that reflects the unique way you will delight, surprise, and serve your clients. If you do that, your website becomes a real calling card for you in a way that other people might not have. The other thing that I do, by the way, is I list a, uh, I list reviews. So reviews from people who have been very happy with my services are up there. A absolutely, because recommendations and referrals are the best. And I even say that, you know, referrals are the best. If you refer clients to me, you're going to get a certain amount of a discount off. Also, in, in sort of getting people excited about referring my work, referring my services to other people. So that's a nice little perk. And then also I uh, put up recent clients. Who have I worked with recently that they might want to know about? So when I, when I work for, I've worked for the NFL Players Association, for example, when I work for them, uh, you, you bet your bippy that's up there as one of my recent clients, right? So when I worked in, in the President Obama White House, when I did their Halloween party, yeah, I absolutely have that in my promo that I was there for that. Because it's something that is, uh, again, they they can be assured or reassured that I'm a professional, that I have a, a stable of work, a body of work, clients who like me and trust me and recommend me. Referrals are gold. So all of that stuff being highlighted in my website is super, super important. And again, if you have you services that make you unique, you are going to do much better than if you're just run of the mill. Your website is your opportunity to highlight the ways in which you are unique and more importantly, the ways in which you will uniquely surprise, delight, and serve your clients. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. I know there's a lot to think about. If you have questions on that, if you want me to work with you on how to make your website amazing so that agents and potential clients will love it, contact me, let me know. We can work together. I have a contact form on myazoldat.com website. You can go there and I'll also, I think I'll put a contact, uh, yeah, contact phone number or something on the show notes, just so that you have a way of accessing me if you want to do that. If you're ready to think about going to the gig economy and you really want to make sure your website reflects what is possible, what you can do to delight, surprise, and serve your clients, 
let me know. As I said, I have slots available. We can work together in a way that will help you and your website shine. Until next time, this is Isolde Trachtenberg reminding you that this episode was brought to you by Brain FM, my favorite app. It is the app that I use to meditate, to do my creative projects, to concentrate, to do admin, which is hard for me, and to thrive. So if you want to try it, you can try it for free. But if you want to actually get the app for yourself, you can get a 20% coupon off at Brain FM. No, I keep doing that. Brain.fm slash Innovative Mindset with a coupon code Innovative Mindset, all one word. You can get 20% off. And because I'm an affiliate, because I only recommend things I love, I will get a little bit of money too. That's listed all in the show notes as well. All right. I remind you once again that I am grateful for your attention and I hope that you're getting something out of this series on how to be successful and work with agents because I think it's important for us to uh, to really know how to do that in a way that is substantive and good and mutually beneficial for you, for the agent, and for the client. Always, it's a it's a triple threat, right? We We need all three sides in order to be successful. That's how you do it. And your website is your best calling card in many ways after being referred directly, right? If a client goes, I heard you're amazing and I want to hire you. Well, then you don't really need a website, but otherwise, yeah. Uh, oh, and there is there is one other thing. I actually should tell you now that I'm thinking about it because I was about to say goodbye and then I thought of something else. And that is if you have certain things that you don't do, put those in too. I don't work in smoking situations. If you want to book me for somewhere where people are going to be smoking cigarettes, I can't do it, right? So there are certain things I require scent-free spaces. Why? Because I have scent allergies. It's just one of those things. I also don't do meat-based events because I'm a vegan. So I, you know, I, I don't, don't bother trying to book me for a barbecue. I won't, I will say no. So there are certain things, know what you can do, know what you want to do, know what you will do, put that in. If you have deal breakers, put those in too. I have them in part because I of choice, in part because of necessity, but it's important to know that too. And if there are writers, if there are, if you, if you need to give detailed information, say that in the website too, that anybody who books you will get a detailed writer of, of the specs that you'll need in order to do the job. All of that stuff can be in there as part of your website. All right, there. <laughs> I've gone further and further afield, but it's imp- that, that last thing is important and I wanted to make sure that I, that I put that in. Okay, I remind you to be bold, be creative, and most of all, be kind. <music>Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you being here. Please subscribe to the podcast if you're new, and it would mean the world to me if you told a friend about it. Today's episode was produced by Isolde Trachtenberg and is copyright 2021. As always, please remember this is for educational and entertainment purposes only. Past performance does not guarantee future results, although we can always hope. Until next time, remember to be bold, be creative, and most of all, be kind. Thank you.